happening because but <laughs>
you can focus on control what's going on around your life in at home okay because we are mostly at home so i can control how do i feel what my space is my time my schedule and that's going really really to help us so we have the power to fight every day to be a champions to have our guard up and be better and be good every day and try to be happy this is going to end very soon so let's enjoy i can't wait to listen to your stories and to join this panel thank you very much and have a great day thank you so thank you so chill chill diamond how is new york new york is actually quite beautiful a little trepidatious but the weather is nice and we're going to enjoy it in any way we can looking good feeling optimistic that's good you look good thank you sir <laughs> it always looks good i know <laughs> and uh let me introduce the panel uh first we have warren lake executive producer of writer of lights out law and order and uh I assume you know boxing. I, I know it better because I got to work with Holt and Brian, two of our other guests today, who were were uh, basically walked me through the world. I I knew it a bit, but they walked me through the world pretty well. And through them, I met another two or three dozen boxers, and that was a, a great experience. You just answered my first question, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Holt McCallany, the star of Lights Out. Holt, welcome again. Thank you so much. Nice to be back with you. Hello, Mauricio. How are you? Great to see you as always. Brian? I'm here. I, let me... Uh, I was mute. Uh, Holt, you're a veteran now. This is your your second intervention in the WBC Talks. You're a champ. <laughs> uh, it's always nice to to hear you, see you. Uh, I was listening before getting live. You are just such a character, and uh, <laughs> you make everything special. Thank you, Holt. Oh, it's 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 a pleasure, Mauricio. You know, you're such a generous guy, and you've always been so gracious to me. And and you're such an elegant guy. And I I, I just uh, I love being in your company, and and of course with Jill. And you've also given me the opportunity uh, to reconnect with uh, uh, some of my colleagues, whom I uh, whom I admire very much and whom I've missed, and whom I don't get to see as often as, as I would prefer. Uh, so, uh, so this is kind of a special, uh, a special thing. You know, uh, the, 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 the men that are on this call are, I think, you know, uh, uh, it would have been nice to have Naberto. It would have been nice to have a couple of other, of other guys that I, that I really like. But, you know, uh, the heart and soul of the show, it, 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 and there were, listen, let me take nothing away from my friend Pablo Schreiber you know, and his enormous contribution or the wonderful Billy Brown or a lot of guys, you know, uh, who may not be household names, you know what I mean, but who are great actors and who are who are great on the show. But I, I just to see my friend Warren again and my friend Brian and, and Richard, it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure. It brings me more joy than I can tell you. Holt, you just answered my first question. Next. <laughs> <laughs> And now uh, let me introduce the cinematographer, Richard Rutkowski. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So this is working. I'm sorry to be late. Richard. It's Richard. Hi, Brian. Hey, man. Nice <laughs> to see you. Great to see you. Fantastic. Please don't answer any other question, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Golubov, producer. Nicely done, Adam. Victor. Thank you. <laughs> Writer of uh, Basketball Diaries. Brian, True. welcome. Thank you, sir. Among other things. Jill, shoot your first question. Oh, let's start it this way. Hearts pumping, blood bursting, palms sweating, <laughs> seats covering one eye, grabbing someone's hands. He's down, he's down, he's down. Cut to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> A big show or a movie with a fight scene should generate the same effect that watching a real fight does, with one big exception, no one gets hurt. And that's the big exception and the magic of it. From the treatment, the script, the logistics, the casting, to the shooting, sound effects and editing, music, do we, the audience, buy it? 
Is it going to draw us into the fight and make us lay down our reality, turn us into believers? Just like boxing, it takes a team. And these are the guys that get the job done. So we want to learn all about this. So who should we start with first, Mauricio? It's your show, Jill. I'm, I'm just a big fan waiting for excitement and to learn many, many of these things and tricks. Let's start with Warren, who says he doesn't really know that much about boxing, but has now become a fan. Warren, your roots were really in the theater. And it, so what is it that fascinated you about boxing? How did this project come to you? Well, actually, um, I, I grew up in, in New York during uh, one of boxing's heydays. And I, so uh, I had a, a pretty strong memory as a, 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 you know, from like age five to age 20, that was a, a key time in boxing that would have been say 1962 to 1977 that that was a great 15 year run of boxing it was the rise of muhammad ali there were lots of things so you grow up in new york in that era and also i bet on muhammad ali a lot so that i went to a i was scholarship to a private school and every time i bet on muhammad ali i got richer it was a really good it was it was helpful to me i was i was the scholarship kid in a private school and i i just i had a nice run uh on boxing back so i i had that that memory in my uh, I guess early core, uh, and then I, I got a call. There had been a pilot before me that Holt basically was. Uh, they wanted to keep Holt, but a lot of other things in the pilot hadn't worked. And they asked me to take a look at it. And the second I saw it, I saw where the show. I knew where the show could go. And I knew you had the guy who could make it get there. I knew Holt. You know, I've I've done a few shows. Can you put the a show basically that Holt's job and it, when you're the star of the show, you're called number one on the call sheet and you need somebody that you can put the whole show on the guy's back and he'll take you there. And he, I knew he had the, the physicality for it, but also incredible ability to, uh, um, to express emotion and feelings uh, um, under, uh, under the su subtextually. You knew what was going on through his face. He didn't have to, it seemed like he wasn't working too hard to make his scenes land and feel real. It's actually a lot of work to get there, but it was, he's a, it's almost like the punch you don't see. He's that good. The acting was sort of, you don't see the brush strokes. You don't see how he just was the character. We put together a new family. We put together, we brought in, um, uh, I think one of the first things that we did that really made a huge difference in the DNA of the show was we brought in Stacy Keach to play the dad. And Stacy Keach had made, a, a seminal boxing film 40 years earlier called Fat City, which is just one of yes. the great... Which we talked about, which we talked about, Warren, not to interrupt you. Last time I did the show uh, uh, with Mauricio and Jill, we talked about a lot of the great boxing films of all time and how they inspired us and how they informed us. And Fat City was one that I, I, I made it a point to mention because I love it and I, I loved it and I loved uh, uh, Stacy in it. And uh, her name escapes me now, but the woman who should have won the Academy Award for playing oh. his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. who I'm talking about? Susie, Susie. Uh, That's right. Anyway, um, I, I should have, I should have, I, I should have looked back at it just because, uh, because she's not that well known, but she gives one of those performances where she just looks like, you know what I mean? You just pulled her off a bar stool and- You don't know what you're watching. Did they just find her in the bar? And Susan Terrell. Susan yeah, Terrell. That's it. That's it. That's what it is. That's what it is. But Stacy's fantastic in it, and he couldn't, have, and, and you couldn't have chosen anybody better to play my father. And I, I loved him, and he was wonderful. And then we, the family fleshed out a lot of it. Then was ca recasting and bringing uh, Brian in when we started to talk story. And Brian, at whatever fights I didn't know, Brian knew every punch of every round of. And we started to put a writers' room together. And we, you know, a lot of times in the writers' room, people just start pitching ideas we sat and watched fight after fight after fight unbelievable talked about talked about the dramatic arc of, of all of the great fights of the last 50 years and we looked into the box and we read book after book after book so we started to just how do we tell the story of a boxer it wants to have all of the ups and downs of the lives of real boxers and we started to have guys come into the writer's room and talk to us about what their careers were like um we met with fight coordinators we met with promoters we just i i don't like to start writing until we know so much that we have to kind of shut down the research or we'll never get anywhere. You go into a, 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 a black hole. Then we got lucky. We brought in a DP, a director of photography, who, um, uh, Richard Rakowski, who- The I best. Met, 
Change, change, and that was Brian's suggestion. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, blame Brian for that idea, uh, and that that also shaped it because the way boxing is shot, a lot of movies that we watched, and some of this is in the guys you get to choreograph the fights. It gets a little cartoonish. That one of the things we learned is these big, I call them Los, Hollywood, Los Angeles roundhouse punches. You, they don't look real, and we we started to, and we talked about what. What language can we have? We also were on a low budget. We didn't have a lot of time to shoot. So we needed someone who was connected to his camera. It's just it, it, what, what Richard sees, he shoots. Uh, and, and, and he approaches things, it's very methodical, but it seems improvised. Uh, and so uh, we just put the right people in place, starting with Hulk. I got lucky with Brian. Uh, and we then, it was strange. Cast members, once we cast one person, another person came and Elizabeth Marvel as the sister, daughter of a boxer, boxer and the sister of two boxers. It was an uh, unbelievable addition to the cast. And we just started to build. And I, um, I, I've done a number of shows. Brian's done a number of shows. This is the only show I've ever done. We do a read-through every week when there's a new script. And people come to the read-through and you read the script out loud. And there was one day I went to, and the, we were shooting in the middle of nowhere. It was impossible to get to. And one day I got to the read-through, and there were two actors at the read-through who weren't in that week's script. Yeah. I, felt, I felt terrible. I thought, oh, my God, nobody told them they're not in. And they came an hour to go to this read-through. Uh, this, is, this is awful. And I, I said, I'm so sorry, guys, you're not in the script. And they both said, oh, no, we know. We just want to see where the story is going. We just want to wow. stay, stay up to date. We, we just want to follow it and be part of it. I've never had actors... I, it, people don't do that, but it, it, it became uh, in the way the boxing world is so tight, I think, and is, is so supportive of each other. Uh, we, we found that in this show and it was, yeah. uh, it, was uh, it was a very special year. It was only a year, but it was, uh, I think, the year of TV I'm most proud of. Uh, so that's okay. a short answer. <laughs> so that's great. But Richard, how, how do you look for the locations? How do you know? where are you going to get those shots? I mean, did Gleason's come to you? I mean, how do you go about finding out the best place to shoot? Well, you know, actually, the, the uh, majority of that work belongs to Lester, our uh, production designer, really wonderful production designer, Lester Cohen. And my uh, knowledge of boxing was smaller than um, Brian's or, or Warren's and certainly Holt's. But I learned as I went along, and I, I learned uh, by what they, you know, suggested to watch. And one of the things that impressed me, uh, there were th three things that that f formed a kind of uh, triangle, a tripod to put everything on. One was behind the curtain, in front of the curtain. In other words, boxers work very hard in not such wonderful circumstances to have that moment where the satin comes on and there's music and women with cards and big lighting effects. That was one of the things, the behind the curtain and front of the curtain. So a lot of the, the decisions being made were where the photography would show uh, a sort of more gritty quality and then when it would show the showy quality. The, the second was watching the fights, I realized that there's a moment of connection when a, when a boxer lands a punch fully on his opponent be it a body blow or a, or a headshot. <laughs> oh my God, now I'm looking at other photos of myself. Yes, that's me disposing of, of a errant uh, body, okay. Uh, yeah. So, so the, who... the thing is, when you, um, when you watch these online, you, you know, in, in videos, you realize that there's an astonishment moment for both the person being punched and the person punching. And that for a split second, a very intense moment, there's a, a connection that only those two human beings share. That was the second. Third was that there's not much to a fight unless you actually care. Uh, that's the right word. If, if you empathize and have an understanding of the uh, character, then the fight makes sense. Then the fight has, has uh, risk has a uh, reward, it has, um, it, 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 you know, the conflict stops being what, what Warren was saying, like a choreography or a kind of dance that can get a little bit repetitive and it becomes something far more fundamental and the stakes are higher. So I always thought that the best way to achieve the best fight moments 
was to build character beforehand. And that's in that's in the page, that's in the script. So, you know, I, I remember there were a couple episodes that the character that you saw develop before the fight paid off in the fight. Uh, Eddie Bianchi directed one. Um, there was one, uh, Robert Morris was in one called Rainmaker, beautiful. So, you know, from from that building block that you lay in with the, with the slower and more methodical character building, you eventually derive the most exciting fight. And that fight can be 30 seconds or 30 minutes. It, it will mostly, I think, succeed or fail based on the performance and the character written. Wow. Just to clarify, it was David Morris, not Robert oh, Morris. Oh, I'm so sorry. David Morris. Robert Morris, Robert played Morris played. is in How to Succeed in Business or something. Right. David Morris. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Brian, as a supervising producer, when do you step in and, and what do you do in order to make this happen? Oh, I mean, that's, that's a, you know, I, I was really there to build the story with Warren and make the world real. So when you're in a writer's room, it's really the synergy between all the people who are talking about the characters, exploring where the story can go. So it, it's really a, da a daily thing about thinking about these characters, thinking about these fighters and, and getting them to their, you know, moving them through their lives. So it's not, you don't step in and out. You're kind of always working on the show. And it was a, you know, it was really fun to learn from Warren and to work with Warren and to build this with him. And we've kept working and building things since then. Um, so that's the privilege is that you're making something with other people and that's really fun. What are we looking at? We're oh. looking at photographs. Of I know the, I know those kids. There's me. Oh, <laughs> and you just acted in a film, didn't you, Brian? Another, um, sports movie. I haven't, I've never acted. You've never acted? This, this is a face for radio. No one usually puts for my directorial screen. debut. <laughs> <laughs> my directorial debut, I have a special part in mind for Brian Galliopa. I'll it's take that it. other Brian Galliopa. It's the other <laughs> Brian Galliopa. But I will say, this nose, this broken nose, is courtesy of James Buddy McGirt from my fighting days. Really? really? He's a good yep. friend of ours. He won't, he won't remember me, but I'll remember him forever. <laughs> uh, did, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Buddy punched you in the nose? I I was I fought uh, out of the Arthur McCanny's gym. Arthur McCanny Senior had a gym in Hempstead, and uh, Buddy McGirt is exact about exactly my age, and I was doing okay. And they put me in with him, and I then Arthur and I had a discussion about whether I should continue to get in the <laughs> ring. Uh, I had never been like that in my life. In my life, he moved my nose from one side to the other side. <laughs> Unbelievable. I couldn't Paul, touch him. Paul, what what boxer do you think you modeled yourself after? Or was this just something innate in you that you've always done? Because you've always been connected to the boxing community. You're still connected. You represent the retired boxers front. You work with cops and kids. You are so important to the boxing committee. I mean, you are, I mean, other people may have other people as their star, but you are our star. You are the person who's given back the most. And we oh, well, appreciate that's very generous of you. Uh, uh, that's very generous of you, uh, I, 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 Jill. I, I love the sport. You know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to uh, to make a lot of lasting friendships with men that are in the sport. I like I like watching the fights. I like training in the gym. I like the experience of boxing. I like I like I like being in the ring. I like being ringside. I like all of it. So, you know, it's really not it's really not that. Uh, that hard to do when you're when you're when you're when you're motivated uh, in that way. I mean, um, you know, uh, some fighters who who inspired me. I mean, look, my, my as I said before, when we did this when we did this uh, 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 well, the last time, you know, my favorite boxer of all time was a guy named Gene Tunney, and uh, Gene Tunney was uh, uh, an Irish New Yorker uh, who uh, was heavyweight champion of the world and. Um, you know, uh, uh, who uh, famously has two victories over Jack Dempsey and was considered a little bit kind of like the, a, a gentleman fighter, right? He was a guy who had a long friendship with George Bernard Shaw. He was a guy that, had, you know, uh, 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 you know, had it was it was it was something of an intellectual. He was a guy also who who tried to work behind the jab and use his legs and be a little bit more uh, uh, methodical in his approach than some of his predecessors had been in that era. 
you know, uh, uh, there was a, uh, uh, look, there was a, uh, believe it or not, there was a friend of mine uh, who's still a good friend of mine who's become an actor now who uh, was a middleweight, but my buddy John Duddy, you know, uh, you know, and he, and he never won a world title and, 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 you know, uh, and he never made a lot of money in his career, but, you know, he used to sell out the garden with a lot of Irish fans. And I used to go and I used to watch his fights and, you know, and there was a certain kind of a quality that he was a, he was a, he was a good guy. He's a nice guy. He projected that, you know, he fought hard, you know, uh, uh, not the greatest defensive fighter in the world, you know, uh, but, 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 a, but, a, but a guy who was exciting to watch and who the fans loved. And uh, uh, th then there was an, an Italian, an Australian light heavyweight champion. Oh my God. Uh, who was really like more than anybody else. I'm trying to think of, uh, uh, his name has gone out of my mind. Uh, I, I watched so, so many of his, uh, of his fights. Um, um, uh, you know, uh, but you know, I, 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 uh, uh, there was a little bit of Doug DeWitt. You know what I mean? There was a little <laughs> bit of, uh, you remember Doug DeWitt? You know, was he was, from Yonkers? Was Doug DeWitt yeah. from Yonkers, New York? Doug it was from Yonkers. You know, yeah. so there was a lot, but I watched uh, as Warren did and as Brian did, I watched hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of fights, you know, and I was looking, I was looking a lot, trying to find the guys, you know, you know, you know, he, you know, it was a family show and we're an Irish family. So I look at the quarries and the quarry brothers. Why? Because, you know, this was, uh, this was a, an Irish fighting family and B, a family who later on had to deal with some of the issues that were one of the major themes of our show. You know what I mean? In terms of, you know, the price. And, 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 and this is something that I think is very important for people to understand. You know, you know, we, we, you know, we go there and we sit ringside and, you know, and it's all very exciting. And we watch these. It's, it's uh, but, you know, the respect that I have uh, for the guys who get up and, 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 and get in the ring, uh, it couldn't be greater because I understand what they're risking. I understand the price that they pay. Yeah. in order to be able to, 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 to do, you know, the thing that they that they love to do. And you only have to look at someone like Jer Jerry Quarry, and unfortunately, I won't list all of the, the law, you know, of guys that have been really, you know, you know, have really paid a very high price, you know, uh, to be in the course. So I thought it was an interesting theme. I thought it was something that we hadn't uh, seen before on television. And, you know, uh, uh, w w one of the reasons that I'm grateful for you, uh, Jill, and I promise not to just go on and on, but in anticipation of our discussion today, I went back and I watched the entire series again. I hadn't seen the show since 2011, right? Because when we did not get renewed for a second season, you know, uh, we were all a little heartbroken by that, to be honest with you. And, 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 and maybe me more than anybody, I, I don't know. But, you know, uh, we had worked hard. And, 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 you know, and we were proud of the show and the show holds up very well, I might add. And, and even some of these, you know, you were talking to my friend Richard a moment ago about the wonderful cinematography and some of these fight scenes and, you know, and, 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 and they're great and they really are. And, and, you know, and one of the reasons they're great is because of the creativity that Brian and, and, and Warren brought to the writing of these of these of these scenes, and I could talk specifically about you know what I mean, you, 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 you know, but 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 fights have ebbs and flows, right? And they have moments of great drama, and they have and they have unexpected things that happen in the ring that can change the direction of a fight, and 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 because they had watched so many fights, that we, we were able to incorporate a lot of that stuff. And then in, uh, in trying to keep it authentic, you know, we've got we've got Steve Farhood and Steve yeah. Albert as our commentators. You know, uh, 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 Death Row, uh, Billy Brown's cornerman. Who were they? Mark Breland. Okay. Danny they, Milano. Remember we had you know, Danny Milano. And Harry, the Mark, Mark Breland, who went on to be the assistant trainer of, uh, of Deontay Wilder, which I, I hope he still is, you know, and, and, uh, 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 you know, just, uh, you know, uh, Paulie Malinaji came on the show and, and I mentioned my friend John Duddy and there was a lot. We tried to embrace the community, even guys. I have a question. Uh, I am a big, big fan. I watched the show. Uh, I followed it. I was heartbroken when uh, second season was not uh, uh, set. 
And I still think there's a future for Lights Out, for a continuity. But I, I was very, very impressed on how you were able to really get the feeling of being the heavyweight champion of the world. The big house, the luxury, the fame, yet down to a very close niche family. Did you talk to any heavyweights, any fighters? You know, it is a reality. I have been in boxing since I was born. I have seen the ups and downs of so many fighters. And uh, what happens when you become successful, when money comes, fame comes, temptations come, and then this person's going to a bubble, yeah. which is untouchable. And they get surrounded by a selective group of fun uh, friends that are the first ones to go out when the money goes. So yeah. how did you all manage to create a script? Because if you watch it, you are watching the life of Evander Holyfield, of Mike Tyson, of uh, Vinnie Pass, of so many that have made money uh, are in the top of the world and then one day they wake up and something happened to the money. Yeah. We, uh, I tell you, we were very aware of, of how often that happens and, and we also all know actors that happens to. Yes. Uh, you know, so that we, we, we were able, and writers, you know, we, we understand, we've seen people have those bursts of success and then uh, get overwhelmed by it and the hangers on come and, and bleed them dry and there's nothing left and the carnival moves and you're left with too big a house and too big a, a monthly nut and daughters that you can't tell the truth to. That, that house, we spent months looking for the right house for lights. It was, it was a house he couldn't possibly manage to maintain. Uh, uh, and we had to find it within a certain range of New York because of, of, uh, otherwise we couldn't make it work. But we wanted a house that, that was everything he thought proved that he'd made it. And it was the house that was dragging him under. And when, once we found that house, I think it helped define a lot. And even the wife defined a lot. It was an aspirational wife. He didn't yeah. hook up with a Talia Shire-like wife. He, he, he hooked up with someone uh, uh, more educated, more, uh, more literate. And it was, he was, it was a different world than he had been bred into, born into. And so we, we, we approached... We also thought of the season, we approached every episode of the season as a round of a fight. Yeah. We thought of it as a, we had 12 episodes, we thought of it as a 12 round heavyweight fight. And every round he's up, he's down. And we wanted to look at it that way. But unfortunately, we knew very well the stories that you're talking about. And that's part of uh, these guys come, usually they come up from nothing. Uh, they get, uh, when uh, the heavyweight champion of the world is like no, no one else in sport. And, the guy, and everything floods in, and then when the tide goes out, you're left standing alone. And that's, I thought it was a great place to begin a series. So you have a guy desperate to get back what he had that he knows he blew, and he has the ticking clock inside his own brain, and it's the last thing he should do. So the inherent tension, uh, and there's no way he can avoid going back in. We also, uh, so there was just, it was, it was, a, it was the whole thing in a sense, that whole season we felt was fated, fated for lights. This is what he has to go through to get back the belt that was taken from him. I um, still, I it was still, elemental. I still hear that last line in my mind and it still shakes me after that last fight when he says, did Go I? Go on. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. It just got me. But I, I, let me ask you this, just from a show business stand of view, stand of point of view, there's so many movies and documentaries on boxing and so many winners and so many Oscars and so many stars. How come, in my knowledge, no boxing series has lasted that long on television? What is the difference in the medium? I mean, we really expected season two. We loved it. I don't think with that, even though we love boxing, we're not that atypical of a television audience. So what is the difference in the medium that makes boxing so successful on in the movies and not and more challenging to do on television? Um, I have an opinion. It's the timing. <laughs> I mean, today, series are it. Yeah. I mean, lights out. Mm -hmm. If it had gone 
Two years Just later, here. we'd still be on. If we, if we I, I totally agree later. completely. You know, you know, and not to not to, to, to you know to, to, to diverge into you know a, a completely separate topic, but what, what Warren just said is absolutely correct. As a matter of fact, you know, back in 2011, I remember I remember getting a call, and I didn't get them often, but I would get them occasionally from the head of the network, John Landgraf, uh, a gentleman uh, uh, whom I know, you know, uh, Warren and, and Brian would talk to, you know, you know, you know, very frequently. But for me, you know, as an actor, it was a big deal. You know, when I would get a call, you know, from oh, yeah. him. and and I, I had I had uh, I had a lot of gratitude uh, for John uh, and for John, and I still do. And I, I also had a lot of a uh, uh, respect for John's intellect. He's a he's a very smart guy, and you know, um, and and he 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 made it very clear to me, you know, because that that you know, in those days, 2011, you only really got credit for the people who sat down Tuesday night at yep. 2 p.m and watched the first run of that week's episode of Lights Out, right? What has happened in the ensuing years, and it didn't take very long, was that the networks had to come to the realization that the audience's viewing habits had changed. And they had to, they had to reconfigure the metric by which they, 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 they determined the success or failure of a show. And now, you, you, you know, they understand that some people are gonna watch it online, or, you know, or a repeat episode. You know, there were people who used to get the DVD, they wanna binge watch the whole thing in one, you know, in one weekend, you know, as I did recently, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, in preparation for our conversation. And, you know, and, 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 and really the numbers that we were doing, you know, it's funny, you know, I had lunch uh, uh, not long ago uh, in Los Angeles with one of our executive producers, a gentleman named Ross Feynman, who, uh, of course, Warren and, uh, and, and Brian and Richard will all remember very well. I spoke to him today. Okay, yeah. So Ross and I have, uh, have remained friends for all these years, a, a wonderful guy. And, you know, and, and, and Ross said to me, hold if we had the same numbers right now we'd be we'd be we'd be good for five seasons yep. you know it was just it was an unfortunate piece of timing i'll tell you what else hurt us in my two things and i and again I, i'll make it brief you know um we had the misfortune of having our television show launch at precisely precisely the same moment as Mark Wahlberg's uh, the fighter. Uh, of the Mickey Ward story, uh, The Fighter, which was directed by one of the great uh, filmmakers of his generation, David O. Russell, and for which both Christian, ba Christian Bale won an Academy Award and Melissa Leo won an Academy Award. And, you know, and look, Mickey Ward is a friend of mine and a, and a guy that I really like one of the best guys, one of the nicest guys that you'll meet in this sport. And, you know, and I, I was really happy for Mickey, but I was really kind of like uh, frustrated yeah. for us because I'd be walking down, you know, through an airport and somebody go, oh, you're in that movie, The Fighter. God, I love that movie. And I'd have to say, well, no, no, actually, I'm, I, I, I'm not. I, I, I'm in the, I'm in the TV show about a boxer. It's called Lights Out. Have you watched it? It's really good. You should watch. No, what's that? Lights Out. I, you know, so, so there was a, there was a, there was a problem there. Also, you know, I gotta say, having just sat now and watched the show, and 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 Richard, I mean, you know, you as somebody, you know, that that's now, you know, working, you know, at Netflix is, or at, at Amazon, you know, and 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 I'm at Netflix and so, you know, it's when you when you don't interrupt the story every few minutes to show <laughs> multiple commercials, when you all, you know, streaming has really changed the way that we experience television. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it, yes. You know, so 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 that that kind of was hard too. You know, it's like you know the story would get interesting and then, and then we cut out and then it's 12 commercials and then we got to get bring them back in and yep. we get it going and was you know um and it and it causes the mind to have to do all of this switching. And I I don't think that it, it is in you know, it's a problem. It, it, and and to, for me personally, um uh, uh I don't know how you'd convince me to do another one like that because you know um uh uh it's 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 the streaming of business it's it just it's just a completely different experience you know uh uh when you're when, when you don't do that it re it rewards being able to stream and watch something without commercials rewards what i like to call the slow burn story because 
the way uh, a lot of shows, uh, th this show was unique in many respects, mostly in that it started with him beaten down and that opening is a really wonderful opening because you see this character literally beaten to a pulp being tended to by his doctor wife. But there's a slow burn element to certain storylines and character developments and streaming rewards those. So you can get into the mindset that says, well, what does uh, Stacy Keach's character understand about what's happening to his son or the risks his son is taking for money or, or whether or not it was wise to bring his sons into boxing. And that's a slow burn storyline versus the flash storylines, the storylines that come and, and explode very quickly within an episode because the conflict is so immediate. We also and, uh, I really like in streaming watching these slow burns develop. I also feel like any space that you can give more of a real estate of time is the cinematographic space. Even though time is not what's in front of you visually, it's well rewarded by the, by the um, luxury of some time real estate. And I feel like people, when they watch classic movies, a lot of what they remember is that, um, that they thought it looked so good. It was timed well, it was timed well. Warren, in, you did a uh, boxing story in your SUV, Law and Order. Did you get some kind of an emotional transference from that? I mean, was it satisfying to you? Did you use some of the same great, techniques? It was great to be back in the gym. And to, we did a story about uh, a girl boxers and a, a trainer who's, uh, uh, well, it's SVU. So you can see where, where the story is going to go. But, but it was good to be back in that world. And to, uh, um, but again, the second I, uh, I have to hide a show like that because uh, a lot of studio execs and network people will tell you boxing don't sell. Boxing doesn't work on TV. I think there's something self-fulfilling about it. Um, but I didn't send that script out. I, I knew that if people saw it coming, they might. It played beautifully and it did very well. But there's, a, a, there's a fear of it uh, these guys have. I think one of the reasons we, we did not make year two was we were on a commercial network. Same show on HBO or Showtime. They would have liked the prestige that show could have given them, and they would have liked the audience that was building. But FX, at that moment in time, had had a few high-profile misses in a row, and, had. And, and Landgraf had to show the world that he was willing to make tough decisions. He, you know, he, he's, he's, he was in a commercial network. One of the theories that Dick Wolf has, and Dick has a lot of theories, but one of his theories is that boxing doesn't work on TV because women decide what gets watched at night now people can watch at different times and there's time shifting oh, it's different. but different. but when but like svu our audience is 70 percent women a lot of the uh, uh I, I remember when lights out was on i was i had two girls in preschool and i would drop them off and it was hard people told me oh i i i keep meaning to watch a show i've just the mom said i've never watched anything on fx in my life because at that time fx was a fast-paced violent network so it, you immediately had, I think it was actually a family show. The show it was about this family struggling. And I, when people did watch it, they, they got pulled in, but they judged it a little bit on the poster, a little bit on the network it was on. And for the network we were on, we weren't violent enough, oddly enough. We were telling character stories, but we, we didn't shoot many guns off. We didn't have the back of a truck open up with six guys with, with, with guns blazing and wiping out a motorcycle gang, which was like every week on that network. We didn't do that stuff. So we weren't violent enough for the network we were on. We weren't fast paced enough for that network. And the people who would have found the show weren't gonna go to that network. It was a very odd, it took a lot to take that show down, I think. Cause it's, it's, it's interesting to me that it still gets talked about the way it does. But, um, the, you know, there it, 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 it we did every I never had a show where everybody we did involved with creatively did their jobs as well as we all did or felt we all did and 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 uh had as many bad breaks past that. It was a weird combination, it, it happens, but my, you know, sports are not necessarily as kind to women to begin with. But I'm just thinking women are becoming more prominent in sports now. Do you think? this show on a streaming level, if it also involves more female athletes, might have a place? I mean, well, we did this woman, the episode was about uh, one of our women detectives is boxing. She's in a match, like a Golden Gloves preliminary. And so, 
uh, we had we had very good numbers for that with a female audience. SVU is 70% women. We had a strong night with that episode. It was a really well-directed episode, but Tan Silva directed it really well acted. We didn't lose anyone. And conventional wisdom was going to be, we're going to lose an audience the second they see people, girls in the ring boxing, we're going to lose our audience. We didn't. Uh, so I think that has changed too. I think that, you know, you could certainly do a movie, you could do a TV series about soccer. Women's soccer would be a great world to do a, a series about. So um, we're... You know, Lights Out is available in uh, in uh, Apple TV, for example. Mm -hmm. Where else can you watch uh, Lights Out? You can watch it on iTunes, which is I, what which is yeah, what I Apple did. TV. I did recently. Yeah, and I you know, it, I bought the season. But <laughs> I, I want to do something. I want to. Uh, I want to. I want to do. We are recording this, so if we can get all of you. To say, hey, what, uh, some some commercial, and then next week the WBC launches, lights out, available on on iTunes, something like that. Mm -hmm. I love to to relaunch it on the boxing side. Oh wow! Just for mm -hmm. the all the guys that uh, were not privileged to have it. Uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a very one of the best things I've seen in boxing. So. I would like, if, if you have a chance, I don't know, Victor, how you do that, but if they just look at the camera and, and say something, then we put it together and launch it next week. Yes, uh, yes, of course. And we can do it uh, in uh, media, in our social media. Yeah. I haven't watched the series because I, I couldn't find it here in Mexico. So it will be really interesting to, to have your invitation and also to find out where we can watch it and, and do it. In Apple TV, Apple and TV. iTunes, and yes. on iTunes, yeah. iTunes. yeah. For some reason, it didn't seem to make it into the big deal. Didn't FX? You know, there was a a, a lot of FX's content went over to Hulu, right? right. Uh, and I, I was disappointed to discover that Lights Out apparently uh, was not a part of that deal because that would have been another area that we could. But here's what I will say, just very briefly. You know, having just seen the show again. Uh, it holds up really well. You know, uh, I had forgotten because it had been 10 years what a good show it really is and how good and compelling the writing really is and how wonderful the cinematography is and, 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 uh, and some of the terrific actors that we had, you know, some of whom we've mentioned, you know, uh, uh, already uh, in, in, in this conversation. So, you know, it's something that, you know, I'm really proud of I, I and, 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 and something that I'm really happy that we got to do. You know, I, I, I know it must have been a difficult decision for John Landgraf not to renew us for a second season. To be honest with you, uh, I would have been, you know, you know, I, I wish that he would have made a different decision um, because I know that Warren and Brian had wonderful ideas for season two already germinating in yeah. their minds. And there were a lot of different directions that this that this story could have gone. Yeah, what were you gonna say, Jill? Uh, Warren, just off the top of your head, season two, where does it start to take us? I mean, get us excited so we can pitch. <laughs> you know, I've, uh, I was just saying, I was gonna, just to go back, it's all, I think the reason it's not on Hulu Holt is because it's on Amazon. And I and think that- and of course you have now access okay. to world champions as backgrounds. Yeah, um, we, we, I mean, what happens to, uh, to me, by the way, uh, and this is, if the show had to end, and we didn't know when we were shooting our season finale that it was also our series finale. We didn't know that. But if it had to, if it was an inadvertent series finale, we went out on the right note. And we, uh, uh, which, which is, he's won the fight, but what has he lost? Right, and, and we, we heard that line, who won? A couple of boxers came and talked to us about being in the ring and, one, and when they're in a, a real knockdown, drag out fight, at the end of it, they don't even know if they won or lost. And they told us that, that they don't know what happened in the ring. There's a momentary uh, loss of time. They, you might be standing, you might be able to talk, but you're not. You know, Eric, you Eric know Morales, the legendary champion, he had a very tough fight with Manny Pacquiao. He beat Manny Pacquiao. <sighs> In his prime, so he's in the shower at the MGM after the fight. He's just, you know, like a movie uh, scene. Water dripping. He's like this, 
And then he turns and looks at, at his dad and he says, what happened? Who won? Yeah. Just like that. He tells it to you. He rem remembers perfectly how he did not, he had a loop from the ring until the shower. He had mm. a loop, but he didn't know what happened. And, and that to me was, what did Lights win? What did he lose by winning? That was what the season was about. We also had that weird little theme all the way through, a little visual thing, Richard, you'll remember, of corridors, of hallways, of not knowing what door to go down, of being disoriented. And that was that long walk down the corridor at the end. It, it's, it's what path do you take? What, and, and we were going for that. Uh, I, I think, you, you know, there was, uh, if, this, if season one started with uh, him at his low point, I, I think season two was going to be possibly the, um, getting all blown up again, getting the money starting to come in, getting tempted again, getting, you know, hubris starts to come in, uh, thinking that you're invulnerable. He should probably lay out. He's won the championship. He should probably lay out. He's not going to be able to do that. He's going to book a couple of fights against tomato cans. He's going to try to make some money. He's going to try to, he's going to go over because his personality is not one that learns lessons. I don't think, I don't think lights had uh, matured enough. It was such a visceral thing for him to win that there's going to be starting out high. And then, then I think it, it was, it was, it was going to be this sort of an arc. Yeah. High crash and come back up. And and we had talked about at some point, does Johnny, does Pablo Schreiber, his brother, try to take over? When does the family find out what's going on with him? How did yeah. they, what happens to that? Does then does the one of the daughters leave when she realizes what her father's risking? So those are places we're gonna what else do you remember, Brian? Warren, do you remember do you remember we had uh, if you guys remember there was the memory book that they make for, for Lights' birthday? Fabulous, fabulous idea. And, one of the moments that Warren and I really wanted to build to, we planted that in season one, that there was going to be a point where he had done so much damage to himself that that memory book was going to become his key to his past, that he, you know, that he really couldn't remember certain things and that, you know, that we would bring that book back as a callback, you know, for a much deeper, uh, sadder scene and have those echoes. We also talked a lot, Warren, I don't know if you remember, about lights advocating for other boxers. Yeah. Making sure their health was taken care of and retired boxers who were having issues. He and was it's going to make a transition. I'm involved in that in, in your life. But that was something that Warren and I had discussed. It was a new romance for lights. I don't know if you remember this, Warren, about a woman who was going to help him uh, uh, day to day, have yeah. this fun for boxers who turned out to be a con woman. And we, we had a wonderful season planned story that's what we did we have a fun with ucla 30 percent of getting help for boxers psychologically financially every which way you can think you took our storyline and well you we were going to make it corrupt however <laughs> yes, we were gonna we were gonna make the fight hard it was gonna be a a, a difficult battle for lights but nothing ever nothing was meant to come easily for lights no well, ever. But you, well, you set that all up didn't you warren you know in that in that wonderful scene uh, uh where i was so grateful to 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 to, to guys like paulie malinacci yeah. and 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 uh and 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 john duddy and bruce silverglade and a lot of uh, 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 a lot of guys that were really in the sport who Around came the to be there right and we talked about uh, you know this is something that, I, that 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 would be very interesting to hear your opinion on Mauricio because you know uh, mm -hmm. as we know so many of these guys who give so much of themselves you've mentioned a couple of them already in this conversation they end up sort of indigent and they end up forgotten and those are the bit you know you 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 know what you, you're talking about uh, you know, Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson, whom I understand are now getting back in the ring. You know what I mean? At this, this is what the, a report that I read recently. You know, I hope it's not true, but you know, uh, it probably is. But you know, you know, uh, 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 what I what I would also be interested in being a part of is a, is is and you know and uh, something that helps the guys that maybe you know you know you know you know never achieved the lofty heights of the holy fields under tyson go ahead Jill. we our boxers fund doesn't care what belt you fought for or where you achieved it is a scholarship for all needy boxers they apply for it and get it but i have to stop this just for one second because mauricio i know you have to leave and we just yeah i i have to go to a uh, an appointment doctor I, simple I, I, but Please continue. This is, I mean, 
and I will watch it when I go home. And okay. do the do the commercial, please. <laughs> we will launch it. Do the commercial. But I want to hear Richard do it. And just that yeah. last question, Mauricio, and I, I won't hold you up because I, I I know you. I know how busy you are. But I mean, I, I okay. I, I just just the, the fifteen seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could there not be some mechanism where some very small percent of 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 of, of boxes, purses, or fees that are paid in sanctioning bodies? You know what I mean? Even if it was one percent or half a percent went into a, 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 I'm sure this is something that's been discussed, you know, you know, going back many, many years with your father and with every, with people in the sport. But I just, I just wonder why it's so hard in our sport, as opposed to in other sports, to do some of these things that would be so helpful to some of the guys that find you themselves know, in bad we, shape. We have tried, and I, I still have one, one option open. The, the problem is nobody can take away money legally. From any boxer, if it's a uh, phone, whatever, if they don't write off, they don't accept. They, they it's and, not unionized. It's not unionized. And when, they're, when they're making money, they don't want. They don't care. They don't understand that one day they will need to have anyway. Uh, when, before we I go on boxing, please. I just have to do one thing before you leave, Mauricio. Yeah. Do we have the? Do we have the picture, Gilbert of uh, Marissa? We have a picture, Paul, that was of Marissa Rodriguez. Paul, el gráfico que te pedí de, yes, de Marisa. You know, so many children are graduating without any. Uh, uh, we yeah. want to wish Marissa Rodriguez the most wonderful graduation. Congratulations, Marissa, from all of us. We love you. She's you such a, she's horrible. a sweetheart. And Nancy, her mom, and they're a beautiful family, hardworking, and so many kids uh, were left without the opportunity to graduate. My son was gonna graduate in Massachusetts. Now they're gonna do an online ceremony on the 29th. But life is, is, is gonna be coming back and it's gonna be very good. And Marie um, is one Holt, of us, so we have to Holt, congratulate her. Holt, I, I wanna invite you, Holt, let's do something together. Let's lead a, a uh, an effort to find a way to have the the boxers fund. Uh, they have they have some mechanisms that if they do voluntary uh, uh, deposits, they yeah, own that percentage of the fund. But I think it'd be good to just start and uh, and see where it goes. The problem, the fighters, if one day they don't fight any longer. You know, one day they make a thousand, next day they make 20 million. So right. it's very un unstable, yeah. but I believe it's doable. And you have just brought a new uh, uh, enthusiasm for me. And if you help me, we will do it together. Uh, it would be an honor. It would be an honor, Mauricio. I'd, lo I'd love to help you. And I think it's important. I think it's worthwhile, you know, because it, it, in the course of our work, Brian and Warren and, and, and myself have all met, uh, you know, many of these guys. You know, I have a, a friendship with Iran Barkley. I have a, I, I know a lot of guys. I'm not going to, I don't want to, you know, uh, 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 mention anybody, you know, uh, specifically in this, in this context, just because there's, because the list is too long, first of all, and because people, step part of this well. a lot of guys who were great, who were great, were not able to find the, 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 the second act. You know, this is uh, this is also this was part of the show, right? What, what, what happens to a guy who devotes his entire life to one particular sport and, and gives everything that he has, and then you come to there's a shelf life. You know what I mean? There's a moment in time when physiologically you can't do it anymore in terms of blood and tissue. You no longer have the capacity. And, you know, and, 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 and I think I think that for some of the men, you know, that have made so many millions, let's face it, there are some guys in your sport, you know, that, 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 that are very successful very. And, 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 and a small, you know, a small contribution a tiny, tiny percent, and not five percent, not four percent, not the, but a small percentage of some of these big purses. If it were, if it were given to an organization who really had a structure in place to help the people who deserved it and who needed it, I think that's a very worthwhile cause. We'll, we'll work it. 
I have to say goodbye. I love you. Please stay and uh, look out for the launching of the boxing world of Lights out. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. I will be in touch. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. As we just I have someone that wants to say hi to you. Si, si. Is that Polly? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about you, man. I swear to God, I was just five minutes ago, I was saying how grateful I was. That you that you came and you appeared on the show, and you know what? You were terrific. And if you hadn't been a champion fighter, you could have been an actor because you got a lot of natural ability, my friend. Oh, he did a, he did a blue blood to me. It was amazing. I, I, I realized I was the only boxer that had a speaking part. I noticed that, you know. But I was I was hoping that they bring back the show because I was so looking forward to coming back. Well, you know what, buddy, we wanted it to come back to and you know, uh, uh, but 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 you know, I'm just lucky that I got to have that experience. I, I'm a big boxing fan. I always wanted to play a fighter. And you know, and you're a great and you're a great fighter and a great champion, a great ambassador to the sport, a great commentator, the way the way that you break things down. I love watching you. I love listening to you. I, I, I think you're one of the real heroes in the game. And the fact that you, you know, to, took the time to come yeah, and work with us, it, it was a privilege having you, man. Yeah, and it was my pleasure to be on the show, man. Thank you. Thanks all yeah. that. That means a lot coming from you, man, especially that you were the guy on that show. Thank you. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. And great seeing you at the fights, too, man. Yeah, Thank I'll you. see you there. Absolutely. Great seeing you, All right. Man. Say hi to my friend Mauro Ronaldo and Al Bernstein. And all those guys, and congratulate Al Bernstein on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'll tell you what, a great commentator, a, a real boxing guy, a smart guy, an intelligent guy, a considerate guy with a real intellect. You know what I mean? A real renaissance man. I, I got so much. Mauro Ronaldo is an old friend of mine, probably the most naturally gifted commentator in any sport. You know what I mean? And between you and him, there's nobody I would rather Best. watch. Than, 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 than you guys, uh, honestly. You're so good at it, Paulie. Oh, thank you. Thank you all. We look forward to being back on the air. I'll, I'll relay those messages for, for, for you to them, man. Thank you. Thank I you appreciate all. it, brother. Thank you. Wishing you the best. Thank Likewise. you. Warren, what yeah. do you think? Thank you, Paulie. Down the line. Oh, sorry, Jill, Jill, I lost you for a second. The audio dropped out. Brian. Yes. First, we'll start with Brian. What do you have good coming up, Brian? Uh, what do I have coming up? I have a, I wrote a series for AMC that I'm hoping it'll get made about, it's set in the music world. Um, Warren and I are cooking up something together, hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, I got a show airing on Fox in, in September called Filthy Rich, uh, which is, couldn't be as different from, I tried to get <laughs> halt in it. Couldn't be as different from Lights Out if you, if you tried. Um, you know, hustling, it's a hustle, you know, yeah. uh, Always writing, always working, always dreaming. It's a privilege to do what we do. Have these so, times been difficult for you because things have slowed down so much? Yeah, I got to say, um, what's been a comfort for me when we're talking about routine is I've been watching fights every day. And uh, I, I'm a boxing nut, and there's something about the bravery of the fighters and the rhythm of the fights and the great fights that has really kept me – I watch a fight a day. And wow. I think boxing is really a beautiful sport. Boxers are not like other people. There's a bravery. There's something to them and something to the game that's very emotional. And just watching them prevail and be brave, there are no cowards in the ring. And it's given me, um, it's given me some resolve in this time. So boxing's given me so much. I'm glad we gave something to it with the show. I really am. So I'm going to ask this to Warren and to Richard. We're going back to what they call boxing behind doors, no audience. You're production guys. What are we gonna to do to make this more exciting? I mean, you're not gonna hear, wow, wow, kill him, hit him, whatever. We're gonna have the pure essence of boxing. What are we gonna to do to make it more exciting from your viewpoint? I'll let Richard go first, cause he's got the visual handle. I, to me, it's the sounds of the boxing that you don't hear when there's a, an audience. Right, the sounds of the feet on the canvas, the, the sound of the punch pulling, the, the sound of a punch. There's a different audio to be had without the, the, the crowd. I think that's kind of 
fascinating. Uh, but visually, I bet they're going to have to come up with something new. Richard? Richard? I, um, I'm very glad you asked this question because during the production of uh, the show and having, having had to set my um, visual imagination to best capture you know, details of fights, a technique uh, came to mind that never quite got used and it's split screen. And we're right now able to look at multiple images over a larger image. And one of the things I was so in, in, enchanted with, uh, maybe that's an odd word to use for boxing, but I was enchanted with the footwork. I was enchanted with how the footwork determined rapidly and in a very choreographed way, the boxer's positioning to both defend and, and be able to throw punches. And that the the boxer that you saw with the biggest shoulders and the most muscular arms wasn't necessarily going to win a fight, but the boxer who could move well around the ring and the ring gets small when you're in it. That was another surprise for me. <laughs> Look at it on the screen and the ring seems, oh, they're so big. The person can always run away from a punch. The second you're in there and you're moving around with a camera trying to negotiate the, the punches and the movement of the boxers, you suddenly realize it's a very small place and psychologically as well. So my thought, I remembered like putting it away in my head for the future is wouldn't it be interesting to have a couple frames below the larger frame and one could focus specifically for a little while on footwork, the other could focus on handwork, one could be a super screaming close up of a boxer that's tracking with his eyes so that you get a sense of his emotional state. Another one could be the overhead at the same time that you're looking at the more traditional um, you know, shoulder height view. And you could alternate these in a way that keeps the viewer learning. Because I learned a lot watching the watching the uh, the fights from gone by and the fights that were more modern. And I remember Holt took us to an MMA fight, and I learned a ton. Um, so that was in my mind. And what uh, Warren said is absolutely true. Absent the sound of a crowd, you will suddenly now hear things that you couldn't hear before. And I'll, I remember once I was sent to the sidelines of an NFL game with a 16 millimeter camera, I had never attended an NFL game and I was suddenly on the sidelines. And one of the first plays of the game, they come running right at me and one guy hit another guy to knock him to the ground. And the sound of it, I will never forget. I just was like, because <gasps> I just thought, oh my God, this guy's dead. He just killed him right in front of me. Ah, you know, and I keep rolling, of course. No, 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 the guy's fine. The other guy picks him up, having just smacked him harder than I've ever heard anything smacked. And, uh, and I think that those sounds could be actually part of uh, a presentation that would open eyes to the sport. I think also you're gonna have the luxury of whomever fights, the commentators are going to have a field day because they aren't having to negotiate a crowd to make clear what they have to say. Right. So that's, that's my 45 cents worth, but. I also think you'd mic the corners yeah. more than more than you do now, right? You know how we've now gotten used to basketball teams, one guy's wearing a mic or one ball player's wearing a mic. You'd have live mics in the corners and hear what's going on, not just between rounds, but during the fight. I think that would be kind of, if you have corners, I'm assuming we'll have corners still. But. Right. <laughs> No, you know, you know, Warren brings up a, a very good point because I'll tell you something. Uh, uh, sometimes the things that happen in the corners between the rounds can determine the outcome of a fight. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, boxers do walk into the. You know, they have to go out there by themselves and actually fight. But 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 that team that that gets them there. Do, do you know what I mean? Including the trainer. You know, and, uh, 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 and 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 the, and the other people that support the fighter, do you, do you know what I mean, during that journey, are, you know, are crucially important. And those things that, you know, it's funny, you know, I, I just uh, am about to get my first directing deal because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to do the Teddy Atlas story. Uh -huh. And, you know, uh, the reason that I'm going to do the Teddy Atlas story, you know, it's like is because I, I um, you know, I had leaned on him a lot for boxing knowledge. And I had played him, you probably remember this, uh, Jill, in, in a movie about Mike Tyson for HBO in the early 90s. And, you know, and, 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 you know at that time, you know, uh, uh, he was training Shannon Briggs. And, you know, and look, uh, I've always liked Shannon, colorful guy, funny guy, big personality, uh, you know. But, you know, um, Shannon 
had, you know, uh, decided that he was going to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, he had these T-shirts made that said future champ and he had the hats made that said, I'm the future champ. But, you know, but the but the but the thing was, you know, you're not really the champ until you get the belt. You know what I mean? You, you got to become you got to beat the guy who beat the guy who beat the guy. And, and, you know, and there was a there was a wonderful scene in episode nine that I think you wrote uh, is it episode nine uh, uh, where um, uh, uh, uh I think uh, Omar, right, into a dark room, right? Omar is a, is a middleweight fighter who, who's going to fight for a, a belt. Do you know what I mean? And he's, and he's, and he's, and he's too cocky. Do you know what I mean? And he's got an entourage and all the things that we've seen so many times that these are real things that you see from butt, right? And, and, and it's a beautiful scene that you wrote, Brian, uh, uh, if, if, it, if it will, or, 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 or well, forgive me, I thought maybe it was Brian. I think it was Brian. But the point is, you know, uh, uh, you know, I take him in a room and I turn off the lights and I say, what do you see right now? Nothing. That's what you own. That car that you're driving, that's lease. That's not your car. That house that you live in, you don't own that house. All these guys that are hanging around with you right now, this entourage, when you lose, they're going to be gone. Okay. When you're broke and you're not, and, you, and, 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 and you're not a contender and you never became the champion, all these hangers on, they're not going to be there anymore. So, so, you know, and, and this is a real scene that happened between uh, Teddy Atlas and Shannon Briggs. Right, because Shannon was guilty in that in that in that era, you know what I mean, of a lot of the same kinds of behavior. You, you know what I mean? That 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 this character on the show of uh, 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 Omar Assyrian, you you know, was 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 guilty of. So so I had an opportunity, you know, uh, you know, we talked about fighters, you know, that were champions that made a lot of money and that ended up broke. One of them is a, is, is still a friend of mine. He's a guy named Michael Moore. Michael Moore won the heavyweight championship of the world from Evander Holyfield and then famously lost it to, to, to George Foreman. And, and now, you know, Michael, even though he's somebody that made millions of dollars, now Michael is, Michael is struggling. And, you know, and it breaks my heart, you know, because he's a good man and he was a good fighter. And, 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 and you know, boxers are sometimes too, too quickly forgotten. But anyway, you know, that, 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 that's, that's my, you know, I, 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 I you know, my love for the sport and my and, and my love for this genre is is so great that you know I I I I decided to do you know to put together you know a a, a limited series based upon you know the, the the life of a trainer you know what I mean I, I won't play him because you know the 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 the, the story really has to take place uh, in between sort of Penny's late adolescence and his mid thirties. And so that's not going to be me. But, you know, uh, 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 but they loved it. They flipped out. Mm -hmm. They I mean, I've never had a reaction to uh, and I'm not a writer. I could have used uh, my friends, Warren and Brian. Just but they call. Just loved, call. loved, 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 loved that. And, and, you know, and eventually, you know, I will be calling my friend Rich Rakowski, but that's another conversation. <laughs> but, you know, but but oh, it's, point, it's, it's no you know, fun to drink alone, Holt. So, yeah, it's no fun to drink. Well, I'll never put you in that position, my friend. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, <laughs> but no, but you know, the thing is, you know, a, a lot of people in the sport and you're one of them, Jill, were very generous to me. Mauricio is also one of them, very gracious, very open, very welcoming. And, you know, and, and, and that was one of the things that I was most grateful for. You know, we, 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 we came into this world, right? We're from another world. You know what I mean? We, 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 we're from the entertainment business. We're story guys, you know, and, and uh, you know, I'm an actor. My friends are writers. My, uh, my friend is a cinematographer, you know, but we, we, we were interlopers in your, in your world and you rolled out the red carpet for us and you treated us like we were special guests and, 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 and that you were honored to have us. And, uh, and, and so some of the friendships that I made, I, I have retained and I will for the rest of my life. So, you know, so, uh, uh, so expect to expect, um, you know, I'm not sure yet whether it's going to be Netflix or where it's going to be. We're having multiple conversations, multiple, bit, but you are going to see the Teddy Atlas story. Awesome. Yeah. The thing about when I, when I was just a little child, I was producing soap operas and we had a fight sequence and I had to pick the guy who was going to pay the trainer. 
My husband's father was a trainer. I knew he got boxing. But I said, that guy looks like a trainer. So he was on the show for about three months with a guy and uh, Larry Joshua played the boxer. Oh, I know Larry Joshua, sure, yeah, yeah. He played his trainer, didn't pay any attention. And the guy comes up to me and says, you know, if you ever have any more work for me, I'd really, really appreciate it. I don't really have any money. The guy leaves. I find out later the guy's name is Archie Moore. Oh, oh my God. The mongers, the mongers. One of the greatest fighters in the history of the sport. An innovator, right? I mean, he was a, he was a genius. And listen, when that guy, what was his, uh, I'm trying to think of, was it against Floyd Patterson? His, uh, the thing is this. Archie, Yvonne Durrell. What's that? Yvonne Durrell was one of his big fights. Right. Where he finally became a headliner after having been a guy who would go from town to town and fight. And he had, a, he, I don't know how many professional fights he had, probably something like 200. I mean, literally, you know, because Archie Moore would fight anybody anywhere, you know what I mean, for short money and stuff. But he was so good and he was so talented that eventually he became a star. Uh, and, and, and and let's recall, in an era when black fighters, you know, were not valued in the way that they deserve to be. J j j j j uh, let's let's be honest. So 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 no, I, that's that's a that's a that's a that's an astonishing name to throw out, uh, Archie Moore. That that that's, that I mean, he belongs up there in the pantheon of the greatest of all time. The most, the most compelling, the most interesting, and with and with a unique style. Do, do, you know what I mean? You know that you know that 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 kind of peekaboo style that that is very hard to fight out of. You, you, you know what I mean? Because you can't you can't you can't fire back right away. Do you see what I mean? If you if I if I wrap up, yes, defensively I'm in a stronger position, right? But offensively I still have to I still have to come out of that shell in order to be able to. To, you know, to pick out, but he made it work, and he beat everybody with it, and you know, and he fought, and he ducked nobody ever. Anyway, I'm a big Archie Moore fan. <laughs> my father-in-law, Clyde Chastain, was a boxer. My husband, Don Chastain, loved boxing. I knew nothing about boxing, but Warren, what you were saying about the different sounds, and what you were saying, Richard, about the different angles. One of the production companies is thinking of instead of going into studios, to going to places like Gleason's gym to really bring it back into that small gym atmosphere. So you're seeing history and, and texture as well as the boxing if we have to do it without an audience. And that probably- I think, I think that'd be great because there's a, there's, that, that gives you a three dimensionality to it. Was a, and you can figure out how to, to shoot within that place. I remember when we were doing Lights Out, we went there. We went to Gleason. Oh, sorry. I, I went there every, that's where I trained. I did an amateur flight there. I, I, I was in Gleason's every single day of my life, you know, and, uh, 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 you know, this is why Bruce Silverglade later came on the show. He was in that yeah. scene we were just talking about with Paulie Malinaji, Harry Kite, Mark Braylon, who were on the show, uh, Country, uh, who was one of our oh, background yeah. guys. I mean, you know, I, I can't tell you how many guys we had on Lights Out who came out of Gleason's gym. I mean, you know. Hold it, because they're going to pull the plug on us. So okay. this is our last assignment from Mauricio. He's our jefe. We're going to turn lights out, lights on. We want to put it to be lights on. So I don't know what, Victor, what does Mauricio want us to say? Let's turn lights off on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's an invitation to watch uh, the series again. If you can do that uh, sure. here with everybody, it would be great. And also, if you can send Jill uh, on WhatsApp video, we can uh, do it. We can edit everything and put it together. Okay. Well, all I'll say right now is, if you're missing sports right now, and we all are, and if you and you're and you're missing new shows to watch, we worked on with Holt and Richard and Brian right here, and a great cast, including Stacy Keach, Elizabeth Marvel, Pablo Schreiber. We worked on a boxing show one season on FX called Lights Out. And to this day, I'm more proud of that than any TV show I've ever done. Uh, and this is the time to watch it. There, I was the star of the show. It's my favorite show. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, th th this is my Lights Out bobblehead. It's a collector's item. Mm -hmm. You might be able to find one. It's a great show. 
with great writing, great cinematographer, a great cinematography and great acting. And you will not be disappointed. So please, Give lights out. Gives lights out a chance. It only lasted one season, but it's one of the the, the best one season shows that's ever been made in, in in the history of American television. I know that, I, that those are big words, but I just watched it again the last two nights, and I was really pleasantly surprised um, uh, to rediscover just how good it was. Cagney and Lacey came back. Why not? <laughs> And if you have any issues with any shot, and especially uh, any of the um, the matching or the or the continuity, uh, please write to me directly because I would love to talk to our script supervisor again, and I would love to bring up whatever you guys see that is at all <laughs> of continuity. <laughs> hey, Church, here's, I was here's what I'll say. Right. I will say, fight fans, if you're missing the fight, like I am, I'm a huge boxing fan. This will give you some of the passion, some of the blood and guts, some of the grit of people going for it and risking their lives to feed their families and to win and to win at all costs. Check out Lights Out. It will give you some of that adrenaline rush that you're missing in this time. It's a really, really, really passionate show for boxing fans. So I hope you tune in. That's great. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Hey, Richard, you never said, where are you? Because you came in late. Oh, I'm, I'm in Long Island. Uh, I have a home in Long Island. I got married in this home and Holt attended my wedding, was <gasps> a, marvelous, a marvelous attendee and danced with my grand, grandmother, Pauline, who next week turns 99. Wow. No. She's still I driving. And she's um, she's still gardening. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do with the rest of my day. Is I have a, a you asked Brian what he had coming up. I have lettuce and some chives and arugula, some tomatoes. Ragger. Well, please Ragger. tell her I'd love another dance when I come out to see you in Long Island uh, next time, uh, 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 Richard. I, I I remember that evening. It was a beautiful wedding, and one of our good friends, Eric Messerschmidt. Uh, who is a, 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 an amazing cinematographer. He's the cinematographer for David Fincher. He's a mind hunter, and he's getting married in September. And uh, I'm sure that uh, I, I, I'll see you there. Um, although I, I hope that I'll see you before because you've yeah. been to join the New York Athletic Club and come get a workout with me. So uh, that invitation is open anytime. Well, again- I'll be there as soon as we can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, do you have any last words? No pun. Rip Richard, let's catch up. First of all, I will, I will call you. Uh, last words. Um, it is so great to see the people that uh, we made this show with. It was a life experience. It was an artistic experience. Um, I just want to work with everybody again. And uh, this was a, this was really a beautiful gift today. And um, the bo you know, boxing is a beautiful sport. And I'm glad we were, we are a part of that lore. It makes me feel proud. Executive producer, any last words? I just thank you, Joe, for bringing us all together. It's, uh, it meant a lot to me to know that the show meant a lot to people in the world of boxing. Really? And it's just great. It, I, I, I guess what I did well was these three guys here on the left of my screen. I don't know how they show up. Uh, the, I think we, we really had a, a, something happened that happens once in a while and, and, it's, and it's still, you feel it the minute you step into the Zoom box with these guys instead of the ring, but it's 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 uh, that was a bond that that uh, I'm grateful that you got to Thank bring you. us together. Thanks, Victor. Thanks, Victor. Uh, I never watched the series. <laughs> I have to be honest because I never found it here in Mexico. I never found a way to, to watch it. Natural. We could but act it out for you. We could act it out for you now if you want. Yeah, you know, I I, I, could, I could send you the DVDs, man. <laughs> if you don't if you don't have another way way to watch it, I I, I got to make sense. In fact, they're in this box. Victor, I gave it um, to you. You know, uh, so so, but no, watch the show, Victor. You'll love it. It's a it's a, especially you know given given who you are and what you do, you 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 you, you, you won't be disappointed. I love being with you, so I can tell that I'm gonna get a lot of it so i'm gonna watch for it and as soon as i get it i will let you know where you can find it here in mexico and i'm i'm sure that it's really great i read all i could in the internet about it so i have an idea what it is i can tell that you experience 
uh, what a champion is and what a comeback is and all the dementia and, and you can talk with champions and warn them what is going to happen because you already live that part. It's really amazing to talk with you. Uh, you are great guys and I'm sure that I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to tell Jill if I found it. If not, hold, I will get the DVDs from you. I will be really happy. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Jill. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure for all. Victor, your final lines? Stay home. Stay safe. Jill. Stay cool. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Have a wonderful day. Richard, we'll talk guys. soon. Brian, great to see you. Warren, Always, man. Thank you, my friend. All the you best. all talk to Stay in touch. What a beautiful connection you all have. Stay in touch with each other. Thank you, Jill. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.